Hey everybody, my name is Dowden, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make music like Sebastien Leger. Sebastien Leger consistently releases music with labels like All Day I Dream, but also runs his own label called Lost Miracle, which is very similar and has just amazing music on it. Sebastian's style is a intricate style of deep house that's extremely groovy, very warm and powerful, and has these really soaring intricate leads that are just always flowing into each other, making for a really, really interesting sound. Sebastian's bass lines are usually pretty intricate and very musical, and they kind of sound like this. Percussive elements are really tight and together, but also very full sounding, and they sound like this. The synth work is organic, but also very exciting, and it kind of sounds like this. We're gonna jump in, but before we do that, make sure to go hit that subscribe button so you get more videos like this one. And if you want access to the project file, the samples, everything included in this video, then definitely scroll down in the description and grab the link so you can download that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start with is the kick drum. With these Sebastian Leger and these All Day I Dream deep house artists, you get a lot of these really, really clean sounding kicks. They're very warm, they're very heavy, but they're not overpowering. So I'm gonna grab this kick that I have from one of my sample packs, and I'm just gonna drag and drop it in there. So it's actually in C sharp, and the track that I'm gonna be writing is gonna be in D. So I wanna make sure that I push this up one semitone from C sharp to D. Let's take a listen to that kick. nice and clean it possesses that nice punch so I'm gonna open up the EQ right around this area is where a lot of the punch comes from a lot of the the initial smack in the chest comes between 80 and 100 Hertz you can really hear that if I boost it so it's it has a nice area there it's, it's pretty punchy it's pretty clean at the top end I've boosted it just slightly and it has a nice amount of sub and I'm just going to duplicate that over a few times May boost up that area just a tiny, tiny bit. Go right into the D sharp there, or the, the D. Boost it just a little bit in the sub here where it's kind of lacking. So I don't see or hear a lot of or, or feel a lot of sub there. I'm just going to boost that a little bit. And then I'm going to duplicate uh, or double that. Let me go around right down to 36. Let's go 36. Grab the other one here. Make it short. Uh, 36, 36 is 72. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to boost it very narrowly. You can really hear it now. So I'm just going to dial that back a bit. Just grabbing those fundamental frequencies so that I know that that kick is really hitting on the D. Just grabbing those fundamental frequencies so that I know that the kick is hitting in the key of D. And maybe dial that back just a little bit because we are clipping. Cool. Moving on to the bass line. So I spent a little bit of time writing a bass line. The thing with Sebastian Leger's tracks, if you want to sound like Sebastian, you need to have these really moving bass lines. These ones that are, you know, they're repeating, but over a long period of time. It's not repeating every four beats, but maybe over 16 or 32 or even 64 beats. These longer bass lines that have quite a lot going on, changing notes, changing octaves, um, usually staccato, they're, break, they're broken up, they're a little bit punchier. Um, so that's what I've done here. I've made this bass line a little bit longer, and we can take a listen to it. I'm just going to show how I made it. I just took an operator. I'll just actually start over. So you can do this with operator, or if you don't have operator, you can use any synth and just use a sine wave and then add some harmonic content onto it using a saturator. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm just going to have the sine wave here. And as it's playing, I'm just going to slowly turn up this second level here, and that's going to add in some frequency modulation, which is going to give us a bit of harmonic content. So I'll let you take a listen to the bass line now, and I'll just keep this at negative 30. Thank you. 
So you notice that the baselines are a little bit different. So I've taken this first baseline, I've drawn out the MIDI for it, and uh, you can just take a look at that MIDI there. And the second baseline is the exact same duplicate over, but at the very end, this last bar here, I've changed up a little bit. And that makes it even longer of a baseline. It makes it even more interesting. So I'll consolidate those together. And by changing just the end of that second baseline, that entire baseline is now more interesting. It's, it's more dynamic and it has more going for it. So super simple, but just one or two notes changing along the way can make it an even more interesting baseline. I'm actually going to add a little bit of tail end to this as well. So I'm going to grab the uh, amplitude here. This release, I'm going to push up a little bit more. And on my second one, the same thing. And we can see the harmonic content here. We can see it's more than just a sine wave. If I turn this off, we're just getting the sine wave, one single frequency. And when I bring this B in, that second operator, we are getting harmonic content. If I bring it up a lot, so we'll bring it back to negative 30. And like I said, if you don't have an operator, you can just use a sine wave and uh, maybe a sawtooth wave and then filter out the high end. Uh, we could also use some saturation on, on here. We'll use the a bit warmer. Bringing up that warmth just a little bit more. Making that bass feel a bit present. I'm going to turn down a little bit and check with the kick. Let me turn those both down a little bit. And then, of course, side chain compression. So I'm going to side chain from the kick. And we're going to side chain pretty hard here. Attack pretty quick, about 30 to 40 milliseconds. And I'm going to turn this to auto. I can turn that in a little bit. I can hear it pretty quick. Uh, I can hear the, the, the pumping. I'm going to reduce that a bit. Maybe put the release a little bit faster. Here we go. So once you hear the rest of the melodies in the track, you're really going to hear the importance of the bass line, that changing bass line, the different notes. Uh, it really is going to make a pretty big difference. I'll fold this so you can take a look at the notes that we're using. Okay, moving on to some of the drums now. So going off my first hat here, I'm going to layer three different hats, and they're going to be hi-hats that are going to be closed. They're going to be uh, a little bit clean, but a little bit saturated once we're done with them. So a lot of the Sebastian the J hats, they uh, are either really, really uh, tight and, and quick, or they're, uh, you know, they're a little bit longer of a tail, but usually that tail is a lot of saturation, a lot of saturated sound, like a uh, really crispy white noise, really crispy high end. It's not so much um, these realistic hats. So I'm going to uh, grab these hats here. So I'm going to go into my drums, drag and drop that into my drum rack. Weird name for a hi-hat, but these are the ones that I found that worked really, really well. So with that, let's take a listen to these three hats. So they're pretty similar. They all have that really grungy white noise sound. But they are different enough that they are going to sound more unique and more interesting. And what we're trying to go for here is that the drum loop is interesting but not overly repetitive so of course it's going to be repeat but it's not going to be the same hat hitting every single time it's going to have a little bit of swing it's going to have variation and it's going to make it much more interesting for the listener and sebastian is great at this his percussion his drum loops are so spot on they're so intricate but they're very very clean and interesting so i'm going to uh draw out some midi here and let's do the offbeat So let's, this one. let's duplicate this one over. What I'm going to do is actually just grab a few of these and just really, really slightly move them over. And then I'm going to grab a few of these. Uh, let's go here, here, 
um, this last one here, and do the same thing. And that's going to make it a little bit more humanized, a little bit more uh, organic, kind of like a room for error. And it makes it more interesting as the listener when it's not so snapped to the grid and robotic sounding. So then I have this second layer here. Let's get this over again. And the same thing, grab a few of them. Zoom in and move those over. And then do the second and move those over a little bit. Let's take a listen to that now with the kick. Cool, sounds good. So I want to make it even more interesting and more organic. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to actually duplicate that hat here. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And if we look at the ins and outs, we're going to have the exact same receive, which means that when I play the same note, it's going to play both. It's going to play both those hats. So I'm going to change that from C sharp just to something that's not being used. So D sharp here. Uh, and then I'm going to change the properties of this second hi hat, the one that was duplicated. I'll just make it a little bit different, maybe a bit shorter, fade it in a little bit, and then maybe throw some EQ on there and cut out a little bit of the high. What I'm going to do with this, it's going to sound different now. It's going to be the same hat, but just slightly different. And what I can do now is when I draw that in, so that's a D sharp, turn off the fold. Uh, what I can do with that now is this one here. Uh, I can surround those open, um, those offbeat hats and make it even more swingy and more interesting. So just put them randomly throughout the track. And then mess around with their velocities. Grab all these. Bring them down a little bit. Bring them down. So now they are a little bit different. A little bit different every time they hit. There we go. So it's a little bit more interesting. It doesn't sound too, uh, you know, too out there yet, but we just still have some more work to do. Going to add a stereo delay effect as well to make it sound really nice and wide. So I'm going to go to this delay, turn the sync off. Uh, and the second one is going to be at about between seven and 40 milliseconds. Uh, feedback will be down to zero and dry wet all the way up. So when this hat plays, it's going to sound really nice and wide. Awesome. Let's add that to one of these layers as well. So now we have this hat that's really wide and this one that's layered underneath it that's really nice and narrow in the mix. So we have this solid narrow hat and a wide hat. I still have this last hat and I'm going to just put that onto the off beats again, but I'm going to show a little trick that I like to do. I like to turn off the grid and I just draw it in myself and try to get it close to the grid as possible without actually, I wish I was doing this a little bit better. There we go. Zoom in a little bit. And this is going to automatically create a little bit of human error and it's going to make it just a little bit of every single one of these hits is going to be a little bit off the grid. And it's going to make it a little bit more humanized. And maybe I'll just duplicate the last ones. Turn the grid back on. And let's take a listen. It's a little low. Whichever the new one was. So I'm going to turn that one down a little bit. And I'm going to filter out some of the low end of the uh, with some EQ. Let's pan some of these as well.
Let's turn this up a little bit. The bass line. Nice, now we have these uh, nice repeating hats that aren't super boring. They're not just the same open hat or offbeat hat. They have a little bit of swing to them. And I'm gonna go and uh, do one more hat here. And it's gonna be a delayed hat. This, uh, this is something that Sebastian does in a lot of his tracks. He'll add just a little bit of delay to his hats to make them feel really natural and, uh, or I guess unnatural, but to, to make them have a nice amount of swing. But the thing with adding delay to hats is you can get phase cancellation very, very easily. So you have to be very careful. So I'll grab just a, uh, a quick hat, very, very quick, and throw that into a MIDI clip. And same kind of deal, I'm just going to grab them and throw them in random spots. Doesn't really matter where they go. And I'm going to add a delay. Let's put this down. Quite a lot. Let's go down just like 20, 25% on both. And let's do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, these can be moved over. And I'm just going to take off a little bit of that attack at the beginning. It's a pretty sharp sound. There we go. And I'm going to put this into a reverb right away. So I have my reverb here, 100%. I'm going to bring the decay time down to about 800 milliseconds for my drums. Nice and short, maybe 778. And I'm going to crank this, uh, this send all the way up so we're getting that reverb from this return track here. Let's take a listen. You start to hear that swing and that movement. It's interesting and it's keeping us really engaged. Okay, now I'm going to go on to something that is going to really, really elevate this. It's going to be the shakers. So I'm using three different shakers in this. The shakers that Sebastian uses in a lot of his tracks are very, very groovy, very swingy, and he adds a lot of uh, saturation to them. And uh, he uses something called erosion. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go for shaker 87. So we're looking for shakers that are, uh, you know, feel a bit slower, a little bit more oriented for deep house. Those shakers that are a bit more like, you know, groovy and they have that slow groove. They're not just repeating 16ths that are really, really quick. So that's what I have right here. I'm going to duplicate that over a few times. And then my second shaker, I'm going to grab and throw that here. And we can take a listen to that one. A bit faster but it's so dynamic there's so much going on it's actually i really really recommend grabbing some really nice shaker loops uh production music live has really good ones you can find them on splice if you search like world shakers and things like that these shakers are usually recorded live they are so great for adding a layer of complexity to your track that is just almost unattainable with uh, in the box sounds. It's difficult to get such an organic and authentic and swingy um, and realistic sound as a shaker loop because you're, you're limited to what you have inside the box and it can just take a really long time to emulate what you can get with the human touch of grabbing something and shaking it, a tambourine or a shaker or, or all these different things that you can make shakers with. So that's why I definitely use and recommend using shaker loops. So my last shaker loop is going to be this one here. All these shaker loops are going to be included in the project file. So if you want the project file, make sure to click the link in the description below or go over there into that corner and grab that link right there. Let's go ahead and check out the third shaker. So lots of movement, lots of air. It's filling up that extra high end where these two aren't. And all three together. So much movement, so much groove, so much swing. And that's what we need. Try to balance these head shakers and hats out a little bit because the hat was getting a little drowned out by the shakers. Moving on to the clap now. So we have the clap, which is going to just really, really elevate this loop. I have two layers of the clap. So I suggest layering up your claps at least two because 
you know, some claps are really, really nice, but it's really good to get a lot of characteristic out of two claps. You can kind of have a bit more control over them. And I just think it really fills up space. With this style of music, with Sebastian Leger's style, a lot of the claps are really tight sounding and really, um, they almost have a roll off or they do have a roll off on the high end. So they sound more like a muffled snare than a clap um, that has a lot of high end. So I'm going to grab claps that reflect that. So we're going to look for two claps that is a good example. I'm going to drag and drop that. And this is good as well. Looking for claps that aren't super high, not super crunchy or punchy, but the ones that are uh, a little bit muffled, a little bit less high end. And both these possess that. So I'm going to grab clap one. I've already filtered at the low end of, this, of the claps. So I'm going to pan one a little bit to the left, one a little bit to the right. I'm going to compress them together. And what I'm going to do with the MIDI information, actually, is I'm going to go in, I'm going to slightly offset these claps. And the same for the other one, but, but move the other one slightly. And I'm going to duplicate that over. So now when the claps play, they're going to play a little bit offset from each other. And that's going to make the clap feel a little bit more organic, a little more realistic, and a little bit longer and fill up more space. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, great. And I'm going to EQ them separately so that they feel like they're not hitting the same spot because they are very similar. So I'm going to push the high end of this one just a little bit. And let's hear this one. Maybe the low end of this one a little bit. Maybe I'll grab a second, uh, a different second clap here. Yeah, that one's good. I like it, but the tail end's a little bit too long. I'm going to reduce that. And I'm going to try and get rid of that. Ah, right there. Nice, I like that. And with this one, I'm going to add... Actually, that should be good for now. Push this up to the reverb. A little bit less reverb. Maybe make it a little bit shorter. Same thing with this one. I like to control the length with my claps with reverb rather than the actual sample. Maybe push this one up a semitone or two. Nice, that sounds better. Awesome. Okay, moving on to the tom. With this style of deep house and this uh, Sebastian Leger style and a lot of styles really, um, they'll use toms to kind of break up the percussion, but also to kind of keep it rolling. The way that I put this tom is uh, in a spot that, that encourages that rolling motion. It feels like it wants to keep on going. Uh, so that's what uh, I think would be a good way to explain that. So I'll do... looking for a, a tom that has a lot of character but it's clean it's not going to be too too distorted and i like this one here so i'm going to drag and drop that and let's take a listen nice so it's adding more groove more movement but it's a little long and it's out of key so i'm going to push this up
and D, so that hits D, and that's great. When you're working with toms, a lot of the time, uh, they are not in the right tuning uh, right away. They will be tuned to a specific pitch most of the time, and definitely, I suggest checking the, the, the key. You can use a tuner, or you can just open up an EQ. And then checking. So right here, I can see we're hitting at about D, 300, 300 hertz. And I've just uh, transposed it. So what it was before, we were all the way down at E. So I could either bring it down two semitones to a D. But it's a little bit uh, too low for me, so I'm going to go up to that higher D. Push that up to the reverb. Moving on to this thing that I called Ting Ting, which is just a bell. And again, just another percussive element, but I wanted a bit of a uh, an element that I think would add a little bit of um, a melodic sense to the loop. So uh, I took this bell. It's like a really nice high bell sound. I need to check the tuning on that as well. Because it's a really resonant sound. We're looking at about F there. So it might be a little high, but I'm going to uh, just see if it works in the mix. I'm going to grab a delay and throw it in there as well. Put pretty uh, high, dry, wet. Awesome, so that actually sounds pretty good. I'll change the tuning if I find that it's a little bit out later, but it actually is working for right now. This next part is going to be a bit of a game changer for this drum loop. So with Sebastian Leger, he does a lot of these really subtle taps and, and percussive elements in the background that really carry the energy of the track and make it really, really interesting. So to achieve that, I took a bongo loop, this one right here. I'm gonna throw that in. And again, as I was saying before, it's really hard to get really organic sounding bongos and things and loops inside of your DAW, which is why using loops like this that are probably recorded or made by people that really, really focus on sample packs is, is usually better and then adjusting it to fit the style of your track and to fit what you're doing. So I have this bongo loop and I can play it, but it's just a little bit too excessive. It's a little bit too obvious, it's too much, it's too forward. Uh, so what I actually did is I'm gonna solo this, and this is a really cool trick. You can go into the audio file here, and I'm going to change this uh, the transients here. I'm gonna preserve 16ths, and then I'm going to reduce the transient envelope. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to turn, uh, turn this into this mode here with this forward arrow. And as I bring down this transient envelope thing, this number here. It starts to really, really pull away and only really focus on the 16ths of this sound. And that's making it much more of a, a more tappy and more small percussion hits and percussive hits instead of this really big boom, ba -da, boom, ba boom, ba -da, boom. With this being said, I'm going to duplicate this over. And now, listen to the difference we have here. I know, I know, sounds great. So it's more of these quick taps in succession and it's, it's more choppy, but it's still really groovy. If you look here, there is a lot of swing. There's a huge gap here. Uh, it's really, really human sounding and it's a little bit too much for me. It's kind of pulling away from the groove. So what I'm gonna do is just actually quantize this a little bit. So I'm gonna quantize settings. I'm gonna go to about maybe 90% and let's see how that plays out. Yeah, so we still have, you know, it's not perfectly on the grid. Maybe that was a bit too much. Let's go back down to like 80, let's do 87, oh, 87. Yeah, okay, let's take a listen now. Great, sounding really, really nice. Uh, one thing that I'm gonna do with these shakers, I'm gonna group them together, all three of these shakers. 
And the hat is having a hard time really punch through. So I'm going to put some side chain compression on this. I'm going to compress these shakers when that hi-hat hits. So side chain compression from hat one. So when hat one hits, I put the attack really, really fast all the way down. All those shakers are going to turn down. And that's just making room for that hat to really punch through. And it sounds much better now, in my opinion. All right, that does it for the drums. We're going to move on to the synths, which is going to be super fun. And it is really, really going to elevate this track into a Sebastian the Jay style track. So I'm going to make this sound. It's going to be just a really simple pluck sound. So I have the MIDI information already here. And the reason I put in the MIDI information before is because it does take a lot of trial and error to get the MIDI information right. And I don't want to spend time kind of playing around trying to figure out exactly what melodies, but here we be. So uh, if you want to grab a project file, the MIDI information, of course, will be in there. And if not, you can just go ahead and copy this into your own DAW. It's not very complicated. Okay, moving on to the actual sound. So this is going to be important. We need to put an arpeggiator on there and throw that on. You'll see that I have this one up here as well. We're going to ignore that one, but this one, main lick, and pretty standard settings. I'm just going to put the steps up to, uh, let's go to two, and the distance can remain at plus 12 right now. The gate, 50%, uh, the rate at one eighth, and this is going to be super important because it's really going to give us the characteristic of that Sebastian Leger type lead pluck sound. I'm going to put this to random, and then I'm going to start to make the sound. So I'm going to make it wavetable. But if you don't have a wavetable, you can make this in any of your third party VSTs. Super, super simple. We're going to keep this one uh, a sine wave. And then oscillator two is going to be a sawtooth wave. I'm going to turn this down about halfway. And we're going to keep them both the same octave. I'm kind of using this oscillator to give it like that punch uh, sound. And then we can just take a listen now. Uh, so our arpeggiator is obviously working and then i'm going to put on this filter and bring it down uh, let's turn it to 24 bring it down so i pretty much can't hear anything and then i'm going to go into my envelope too put the sustain down quite a bit almost totally bottomed out and the amplitude i'm going to put a little bit higher on the sustain going into the matrix. So I'm going to turn this into a pluck really easily by touching the filter, changing this to filter frequency one if I touch here, and then turning this up on the envelope. So I'll put this up. Pretty plucky. It's not plucky enough, but I want this to be more of like a, like a bell type pluck. So I want it to sound like it has a, like a mallet hitting it. And if I just turn this up to make it more of a pluck, it's not really mallet y is that a word? Uh, so I'm going to grab this envelope 3, and I'm going to bring the sustain down, and this decay is going to be really fast. And I'm going to make that envelope hit on the frequency as well. Really nice and percussive. Let me turn the volume of this one down a little bit more. And the wavetable position. And I'm also going to try and put this uh, maybe on the resonance. So I've got the resonance and the same thing with envelope three. Get it real nice and punchy. Okay, so now we have the sound, but what is really, really going to make this really, really sound uh, like, a, like a Sebastian lead is this filter delay called Wanderer. So it's a preset in Ableton, and check this out. This sounds so, so cool. It's going to be playing different delay settings on the three bands of the sound. Super cool. Let's check it out with the rest of the track.
Okay, so it's starting to sound like this ting ting is out of key, so I'm going to bring that up. F, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D. So that's up eight. Sounds good, I'll bring it down one octave to see how that sounds. Nice. Great, thought it sounded good. Gonna make this sound even more interesting and more Sebastian Leger e with erosion. So Sebastian loves using erosion. I watch it in some of his videos. Uh, he will use erosion on pretty much everything. So I'm gonna throw an erosion on there and we're gonna bring up some of the white noise with the sound. So that sounds cool, but I'm going to add some movement to it using LFO tools. So this is a Max for Live device. If you don't have Max for Live, you won't be able to use this. So I'm going to map this to the frequency. It's going crazy, going crazy, let's go crazy. And I'm going to bring this really, really slow. And then the depth, I'm going to turn it down quite a bit so it doesn't move so much. And the bottom and top, I'm going to kind of keep it up a little higher. And not too, too high. Let's take a listen now. Pretty cool. Let me go a little lower. Uh, okay, next, moving on. I have this guitar pluck. So, a lot of Sebastian's track, they don't have just one melody. They don't just have one single melody. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, they have like 40, and they're all amazing. The lead, and then he'll have a sub lead type thing. He'll have a sub melody on that sub lead. Like, he has so many of these leads coming in and out, filtering in and out. And it's just amazing the, um, the amount of intricacy in his tracks, but it really, really sounds good. And the melodies all play off of each other. So that's kind of what I tried to do here with this one. So I have this main lick. And we're only listening to the beginning. I'm going to open this loop up more so we can get more of an idea of what it sounds like. And then I took the melody and I added the second one. So I just copied some of the, the notes here and added in this, uh, this pluck guitar. So it's actually a, a preset in Ableton as well. Uh, FM pluck guitar. I'm trying to use sounds that people are gonna have or sounds that I can make and I can show you really quickly in the videos. Let's go ahead and listen to this now. This pluck guitar, I'm gonna throw an EQ in there. So I can hear there's a little bit of low end going on. Don't want that. There's the devices. Let's turn the delay up a little bit as well. And the reverb up a little bit as well. Space. Nice. So let's listen to let's listen to the whole thing now. We have almost everything done. Let's listen to the whole thing. down a little bit so we're not clipping uh but yeah it sounds really good we have the, the main lead here and then the secondary lead coming in and just adding a little bit more flavor a little bit more interest to the sound um without being overbearing and it, something that sebastian does in a lot of his tracks is is this, he'll just add one or two notes in between everything else, and he'll use like a sound that's not, you know, electric sounding. He'll use more organic sounds. He, uh, he actually uses a lot of percussive elements and, and things like that. And uh, let's actually add, uh, he'll use something um, called Redux, and that is like a bit reducer, I guess. So it like reduces the bit rate and it makes it sound kind of bad, but in a good way. So let's listen to how that sounds.
where it kind of gives us that cool edge. It's really cool sounding. And we have just two more things left to do for this to be complete, and we can do a really quick arrangement. So I have this cool effect. So I've resampled and I took this main lick, and I'm going to resample something. So I'm going to uh, play here, record, and solo the main lick here. And actually, I'm going to go over here where it's not playing, and going into the MIDI information, I'm going to fold everything. And I'm the arpeggiator off. And let's go ahead and record. And uh, check this out. This is really cool. Awesome. So I have these three effects here. I'm just going to split them up. And... We're going to throw a bunch of delay and reverb on there. Lots of reverb and lots of delay. And EQ out a lot of that low end. more well and last but not least i'm going to do this percussion pad type thing so it's actually just going to be uh, another way to add another layer of depth to the sound so these tracks are so intricate because they have so many subtle layers that really really bring out the entirety of the track I'm taking the lead midi here and i've just copied that over I'm going to grab bell hello chard I don't make these names up. And let's turn this on and hear how it sounds. So like I said, Sebastian sometimes will make leads out of his percussive elements, and that's kind of what I did here. So I, if you change this receive so that it says all notes, now you can't play it here, but you can actually play it on your keyboard. So that's what I've done. I've copied this lead MIDI information over and I have turned this into like its own little lead. I believe it. I have to transpose it up one semitone. I think it's not the right key. Uh, and then I'm going to make it even more interesting by grabbing all the information and moving it forward a little bit and then shrinking it back so that it doesn't overlap. And now when it plays, it's going to play the first note of a lead, and then this pluck type percussive thing is going to come in like ba bump. Let's take a listen to that. I'm going to compress this because it's pretty loud, but it's not, it's, it's mostly peaking. So I'm just going to really squish the sound here. I have my own reverb. Some pre-delay. and more delay. Awesome, we are ready for a very quick arrangement. Okay, so I'm going to start at the very top and I'm just going to move everything pretty much over and just duplicate it over. I'm going to just keep it really short and sweet 
but we're just going to listen to the drums at the beginning and then the bass line is going to come in and then we're going to bring in the rest of the sounds. Let's take out, let's try and take out the shakers and get rid of these. Take the shakers out for another bit. Five, six, seven, eight. Bass shouldn't come in yet, so I'm just going to move that over. I don't even have a pad in this track yet. I don't think we need one. Okay, let's filter this in. So I'll grab a filter. Throw it on the end. for the this part here and then the bass comes in I'm just going to turn everything down because we are clipping uh, so I might to adjust the volume a little bit, but I'm just going to grab everything and bring it down, maybe 3 dB. Grab some white noise. We're almost ready. I'm just going to put some white noise here, and then the track is pretty much done. Yay! Final touch-ups, I'm going to uh, just grab all the drums, throw them together, and compress them with the glue compressor, just very, very slightly. And I want to add a one more layer to this, because I think that Sebastian Leger does this a lot, and I kind of didn't really include it, so I'm going to do this right now on the fly. And that's going to be to uh, add a lead that is, you know, kind of going in and out of the other leads. So I'm just going to duplicate this lead here. And I'm going to take off the sign and just do this sawtooth wave. And then I'm going to automate the frequency of this. So I'm going to maybe, maybe I'll just draw it in, make it nice and smooth. So maybe I'll do duplicate all this over.
And then as we get to here, start to bring it in. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna sound real nice. And just make this really nice and smooth. Okay. Uh, as well as I'm going to automate in here the transposition of the arpeggiator. So let's go into the arpeggiator and I'm going to change the steps here. So as the track is playing, it's just going to jump from step to step. Try and do this quickly. Uh, and let's copy over maybe. Like that. Then also the distance, I can do the same thing. Go from that to 24. And so this is going to kind of jump these notes up. You're going to jump from just moving up 12 semitones to 24, and then combining that with the steps is going to make it pretty interesting. Hopefully. Okay, copy this over. I'm going to copy this pretty randomly so that it's different every time. All right, and let's take a listen. This should be the final playback. Let's let's double check first, actually. And let's crank up the sustain a little bit on this one. And maybe, you know what? I'm going to actually map this to the sustain as well. No, I'm not. I'm going to duplicate it first. So this one's going to be mapped to the frequency. And now the sustain is going to be mapped to this as well. So you're going to get some longer and shorter notes here. This is going to sound really neat. Let's go ahead. One final playback, beginning to end with the automation of the, my take on Sebastian Leger. some reverb.
All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to grab those project files. Everything that was in this video is going to be included in that project file. And definitely hit that subscribe button so you can get more videos like this one.